Food, food prices are now up 6.4%. Gas prices are up 58%. And we all better get used to it. Record inflation is at 30, a 39-year high. Well, some are blaming the pandemic for the soaring inflation. Others are pointing the finger at the president. Dale Hurd reports on the economic crisis that's forcing the Federal Reserve to take action. Inflation is roaring higher. A new poll shows most Americans blame Joe Biden for it. And this could just derail his massive social spending plan, known as Build Back Better. A poll by Fox Business shows most voters think Biden is making inflation worse. Two-thirds say inflation has caused them financial hardship. The producer price index, a key indicator of inflation, is nearing double digits. 9.6% uh, producer price index is uh, astounding. And the vast majority of it is not temporary. It is here to stay. Consumer price inflation is currently at a 39-year high, rising nearly 7% over the past year. Food prices up 6.4%. Gas prices are up 58 percent. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell announced Wednesday the Fed is changing to a course that would likely mean higher interest rates in the first half of next year. Powell blamed the inflation on the COVID pandemic. While the drivers of higher inflation have been predominantly connected to the dislocations caused by the pandemic, price increases have now spread to a broader range of goods and services. But economist Dan Celia says the cause is much simpler. We've had money uh, too cheap, too fast, too long, and it continues to devalue the dollar. Polling also shows a majority of voters believe Biden's proposed social spending plan, known as Build Back Better, would push inflation even higher and hurt the economy. The White House hoped to pass the $2 trillion package by Christmas. But now it looks likely delayed until next year. A big reason is the opposition from Democratic Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, who believe the big spending bill will further damage the economy. Biden and Manchin had a rocky meeting at the White House Wednesday. It's a question of how much their own party is going to end up, you know, being the roadblock to it. And thank goodness. We've got a couple moderate Democrats left because if it weren't for Manchin and Cinema, this would already be a done deal. And Celia believes inflation is going even higher than November's 9.6 percent on the producer price index. I would suspect by the end of December, when we get that number in January, it's probably going to be double digits. Federal Reserve officials expect to raise short-term interest rates by one quarter point at least three times next year to help rein in inflation. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Well, if you haven't taken advantage of the low interest rates on mortgages, uh, if you haven't done it, you might want to get that taken care of. Uh, go look at your mortgage interest rate. I've, I'm hearing you can get 3% in the market today. Uh, it, it, at the end of next year, if you have three quarter point hikes, well, you're not going to get that anymore. It's going to be 375, uh, maybe even four. So uh, take advantage of the low rates while you can and lock, lock them in and lock them in for a, for a long period of time. Jerome Powell is responding to inflation and what he's seeing is um, a wage inflation. And what's happened is the pandemic has led a lot of people to say, well, I don't want to be part of the labor force anymore. And uh, we're seeing it all over the, the country with the help wanted signs and uh, uh, various job openings that are going unfilled for months after month after month. And so uh, employers have to pay more wages. That in turn is going to drive an inflationary spi spiral. Then you see all the government uh, incentives where the government is literally giving away money to people, uh, and that is inflationary. And whenever you have an oversupply of money chasing a limited supply of goods, uh, the price of those goods is going to go up. Now, is the pandemic part of it? Yeah, you can't produce more goods because you have some supply chain issues. And uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, demand went uh, all the way down to zero for some products. 
And so the, the manufacturers stopped producing them. In order to ramp back up into production, now that the economy is back, they're being a little slow. But the old adage that high prices are always the cure for high prices and low prices are always the cure for low prices, you just have to wait it out, that's not really going to apply here because of that wage inflation. So the, the Fed has to act. They're going to reduce the supply of money. That's the biggest thing they have to do. They're going to increase interest rates. And when they do that, you and I as taxpayers are going to pay a much higher bill for the now $29 trillion deficit. That means the federal government is going to be borrowing money at a higher rate. So should the federal government do even more borrowing in order to do the Build Back Better, uh, I would say no. That's going to be inflationary. You're going to increase the amount of money circulating in the economy. You're going to increase the amount of federal debt and then the amount of money that the federal government pays in interest every year. So it's very, you know, that's a short economics lesson, but this is a bad bill, and we, we we're going to see inflation. It's going to be here for some time.